That report in part states that the public accommodations in Fort Worth are the subject of complaints by minority groups and individuals who are reportedly refused service or lodging on the basis of skin color. The council and mayor received the report, but after consultation decided to study the matter for one week and then placed it on the agenda for next Monday's regular meeting. The report and that proposed ordinance were presented by the Judicial Relations Committee of the Community Relations Council. The committee's chairman is Fort Worth Rabbi Isidore Garzik. How would this proposed ordinance, if adopted, affect so-called private clubs or uh, social clubs which restrict their membership by means other than uh, by race or creed? Well, as we understand it, uh, this is not against any private club or private social entity that puts up restrictions that's common to all. Uh, the only thing uh, the Community Relations Commission was really set up to try to alleviate and, if possible, to eliminate all sources of discrimination. And it is against that that we are trying to act through the ordinance. The ordinance, if adopted as written, would make it unlawful to discriminate against any person in places of public accommodation because of race, color, or national origin. It sets as a fine a minimum of $25 and a maximum of $200. Generally, the ordinance would cover hotels, motels, restaurants, theaters, bars, and nightclubs, with the exception of the bona fide private clubs and fraternal organizations. Members of the council seemed generally receptive to that new law. They asked for the one-week study, though, to study it in detail. This is Gene Thomas, Channel 8 News in Fort Worth. It's not socially unacceptable for a man to drink, uh, maybe even drink too much. Uh, but then a woman who is sloppy drunk is looked down on and put down by our particular society. Whereas uh, this is the case, the women leave the alcohol alone and carry a fancy little jewel uh, pill box and pop pills like popcorn and get just as stoned as the men do. And I think if we include both the pill problem and the alcohol problem, we'll find that there are just as many women involved as there are men. One of the reasons, I think, why the discrepancy in four men alcoholics to every one woman alcoholic is the fact that women alcoholic can hide better. Uh, she cannot function at home, and the home still carry on, whereas if the man or the breadwinner does not function at work, uh, then something has to be done right away. So I think, basically, they're more hidden women alcoholics, and these women alcoholics are in the home. Well, I don't really know what we're going to do other than have a meeting of all the parents of the boys and girls and elect a spokesman and try to go before the city council and find out why this was done to our children. Mr. Boynton, do you have any idea why this was done, why you were indeed raided? No, no ma'am, I sure don't, uh, because there's been dancing there before and uh, everything. I don't know, they, they said in the paper there's an enormous phone call that done it. I really don't know why we were. Uh, what disturbs you most about what happened? Do you feel that you were doing something illegal? What do you think of the most detrimental effects? Well, to me, the most detrimental effect was the damage done to the children. They saw a policeman walking in in full regalia and guns on their sides, and they felt they were being raided for something they were doing. The only thing we know they were doing were receiving letters for some year that they put in playing football in a drill team. 
they ate and then they were allowed to dance. And we feel that this is more damaging to the children mentally than anything else. You feel there's something wrong in Ball Springs? Is somebody playing politics and trying to use the children as pawns? I think there's something behind all of this, and I'd like to try to get to the bottom of it. And I think I have enough people behind me now that will, when they start fooling around with kids, then the parents get involved. And I think there is something behind all this in Ball Springs. It's just a building. It's not an ordinance. It's a bylaw of the building. And I was never, uh, I never made the statement that there was an ordinance against dancing. I don't know how this came about, but uh, it did. Uh, several other things was uh, said that I was uh, quoted as saying, which is not true. Why did you go over there? Were you? Did you go over there as a member of the committee that supervised the building, or as the police chief? No, I went over there as a member of the committee because I was contacted by an anonymous caller that told me that there was dancing going on over there and drinking. Uh, I just happened to be in uniform at the time. I happened to have a councilman with me at the time. Uh, we were originally en route to make a pickup on a warranted subject, uh, on a warrant, when this call came in. It seems as if uh, anything that happens in the city of Ball Springs, that's the first thing that people want to holler out here, is it's a political issue. It's not a political issue as far as I'm concerned. It was just an outright fact that there was a violation involved uh, toward the uh, code of the building, the regulations of the building that were set by the committee. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's not a political issue. I hope it doesn't turn out to be one. Alcoholics, in my opinion, are the most rejected of all people. They've been rejected by their families, by their employers, by friends, uh, even by in district court uh, proceedings recently, rejected by jail. And you don't get much more rejected than that. And among those who've uh, rejected alcoholics are physicians. And we could not learn much about these people uh, rejecting them. And now that uh, Doctors have taken an interest and the public has taken an interest. We're beginning to discover many, many new things and, and encouraging things in the field of alcoholism. Dr. Wortham, why were physicians rejecting alcoholic, alcoholics? Basically because it messed up their uh, daily routine. To handle a toxic person was a relatively full-time job uh, and the pay was very poor. Uh, many of these people resented being sick uh, when they got over their particular toxic state, uh, they didn't pay their bill. And uh, so doctors found that it was much easier not to treat this particular kind of person. 